Hi guys, I'd uh, like to take the opportunity to start off our argumentative unit by talking about the basic elements of argument. This PowerPoint was uh, created by me, but it was taken largely from a template given to us by the Davis School District's English Language Arts Curriculum Department on argumentation. In order to get points for this, present, this uh, presentation and this activity, you'll need to go ahead and write down the following definitions in your notebooks. Um, they're bolded in the PowerPoint to help you find them. The definition of argument, persuasion, thesis, claim, evidence, reasoning, or warrants, as well as breaking down the arguments that are listed in the final two slides of the PowerPoint by identifying these elements within them. Now, not all of these elements are present in each of them, but it is important that you find those elements within the ones where they do exist. All right. This is a short film clip that talks about what argumentation is not, and it basically just shows two men that are uh, getting heated, arguing over really nothing, uh, and, and just getting upset at one another and contradicting each other. Argument is not that, despite what we may have been conditioned by our societal understanding of argument and maybe what we've called an argument with mom or dad or a significant other or brother or sister um, those things are not necessarily arguments all the time we'd like to take a different look of the word argument in in our english classes and, and maybe hopefully refine our understanding and not only of life but just uh just in language particularly um, so argument is a collection of claims evidence and reasoning aimed at presenting a truth uh, and you'll notice there that those three elements are, are the key and essential elements to argument claims, evidence, and reasoning that are aimed at presenting a truth. Now, it's important that when I say truth, I qualify this as truth is definitely personally relative. What is true for one person uh, is not going to be true for every person. Uh, that's a hard thing to understand, but that's the reality of what we what we live in and the world we live in. So just understand when you're presenting a truth, it may not be universally held to be true to other people. Uh, persuasion differs in this fact that it's a collection of appeals aimed at changing another's views or action. So our purpose in persuasion and our purpose in argument are two different things. Argument, we're more concerned with getting at the truth, whereas persuasion is more concerned about changing another's views or actions. There is some crossover between persuasion and art or an, an argument, um, you know, different techniques that work both ways. There is definitely a, a usage of appeals that can be done in argument, as well as there is a logical structure to that of persuasion. But our goals are really what is different, uh, and that's an important thing to understand when we're talking about argumentation and persuasion. So the word argument probably stirs up thoughts of loud shouting matches, emotional outbursts, and impassioned speeches, right? Argumentation is not a fight over Twitter with uh, insults and just saying, no, I'm not, yes, I am, no, I'm not, yes, I am. That's not argumentation. Uh, it lacks structure. It's uh, overly emotional, and it's not argument. The true art of argumentation is a cool, calm, and collected approach to presenting ideas in a form that helps the reader see the truth in the debate. Argumentation should be more like a well-managed court case than a TV talk show uh, yelling match. Well, you might be confused by arguments that you've had in the past. I would just ask you to kind of step back away and think of the differences between those arguments and the arguments in a court case. Usually your arguments in the court cases probably are more productive in actually getting things done. So. Uh, we're going to try to adopt that model and, and have a little bit of a cleaner, less emotional and well-managed type of aim when we argue in our English classes. Next up, I'd like to talk about the parts in terms of argumentation. Uh, the basic parts include thesis, claim, evidence or data, reasoning or warranting, and counterclaims. So let's start out with the thesis. The thesis is the central idea of your essay. Uh, the definition that I would actually like you to write down, though, is the second line, that in an argument of essay, the thesis is a definitive stance on a controversial matter being debated. Now, there's a couple of key points. First of all, the fact that it's definitive. Okay? It takes a stance on things. It doesn't hem-haw or say a little of this and a little of that. It takes a stance on the points. Uh, and it's important that we do that when we're arguing. Now, it's got to be a stance that we believe is the truth, but it does need to be a stance. The other thing that uh, is important is that this thesis must be debatable. Uh, you can't have a thesis out there that is not debatable. A lot of people will, you will 
throw out theses that are so understood and mostly accepted that it's not a true argument. Uh, let's, let's look, for example, if I were to argue that the sky is blue. That's not really that good of an argument or a thesis. Most people with, in their right mind are going to say, yeah, well, the sky's blue. There's not a whole lot to argue. If there's no opposing side to my thesis, I'm not writing an argumentative essay because I don't have an opposition to entertain. A claim is a smaller, uh, smaller, basically a mini thesis if we think about it, and a claim backs up the thesis. The dictionary definition or the definition that we'll go by is a general debatable proposition that supports your thesis. In essence, you're as asking your audience to accept the claim, its evidence, and the corresponding reasoning in order to show the truthfulness of your thesis. Uh, the claim, uh, once again, must be arguable like the thesis. Okay? It must be something that people must think about and say, okay, yeah, uh, yeah or no. And they must be able, have to be able to argue with that. Uh, claims function as our topic sentences for our body paragraphs, at least in this class. Uh, as you get m a little bit more artistic, you're going to find ways to mix your claims in so they're not necessarily the first sentence of every paragraph. But for now, and just for practice in our, in our writing and, and the, the styles, I want our claims to function as topic sentences that guide the rest of our paragraphs. So let's go ahead really quickly before we go any further and, and think of a thesis really quickly. Perhaps we could go with the thesis that Mr. Jernigan is the best English teacher in the world. Now, that thesis is certainly debatable. You may have had better English teachers uh, in the same school, let alone in other schools or in the whole wide world. But that having been said, it's debatable, so it, it suits our needs as a thesis. A claim that could support that maybe is that Mr. Jernigan is the funniest teacher in the school, or the world even. Okay. So we'll go ahead and talk about that as we go through, but let's go ahead and operate with the rest of us, uh, this PowerPoint, with our thesis being that Mr. Jernigan is the greatest English teacher in the world, and the first claim that we're going to make to support that is that Mr. Jernigan is the funniest teacher ever as well. Now, moving on to evidence. Evidence is the facts that show your claims to be true. Uh, now, evidence, like it says in its own definition, has to be factual. These things have to be real. You can't make these things up or pull them out of air, and they're not debatable. They're not opinion-based. Um, evidence can take the form of four basic forms. There's four types of evidence. The first is statistical evidence, which is made up of numbers or research. So let's go back to our argument about Mr. Jernigan. So we argued that Mr. Jernigan is the greatest teacher in the world. We gave the first claim that he was the funniest teacher in the world to help support that thesis. And now we could use a statistical evidence such as 98% of students on an exit survey commented on how hilarious Mr. Jernigan's class was. That would be a statistical evidence. It takes the form of number. It's verifiable. It's hard to argue with. It's concrete. Now, we all know statistics can be manipulated. However, it's hard to argue with statistics. The next type is testimonial evidence. Testimonial evidence is certain expert opinion that helps give an idea. So if we were writing our essay on Mr. Jernigan, the greatest English teacher in the world, perhaps we would go out and consult a student from his class, and they could give us a testimonial. So Bill Schmill from last year said, Mr. Jernigan is certainly the best English teacher I've ever had or the best English teacher I've ever heard on. Okay. That would be an example of evidence given as a testimony from Bill Schmill. Now, testimony often is taken from an expert opinion, so maybe you want an expert opinion. You could talk to another teacher or Principal Astle and get a quote on them or uh, from them on Coach Jernigan's teaching. The next step would be, or the next type of evidence would be anecdotal evidence. You could also use anecdotal evidence or a story that illustrates how funny Mr. Jernigan is. If we wanted to back up that claim that he was funny, we could tell a story about a particular time in class where he dressed up or he uh, made a joke or any of those types of things. And finally, the last type and perhaps the weakest type of evidence is analogical evidence. Uh, analogical evidence rarely stands on its own. Analogical evidence is where we go ahead and make a comparison in order to help illustrate the argument for the for the listener better uh, so for example we could compare we could say mr. Jernigan is the Chris Farley of teaching which would be good but in and of itself is far too opinionated to stand on its own if we could substantiate it with other claims or other sorry other pieces of evidence that support our claim then we are going to have a greater chance of proving our argument and having our argument stick
the final uh, basic part of an argument is the part of warranting or reasoning. Reasoning, in short, is the explanation of the logic connecting all your parts of your argument. Despite the fact that you may feel like it's understood uh, and the connection is easily and easily found and clear to the reader, you do need to make sure you explain your reasoning at all times. When we make these connections, we're showing how the evidence hooks, the, hooks to the claim and shows the claim to be true, as well as supporting the thesis. Warranting is that simple explanation of our logic, and that's where it's powerful. It's the most important part of our argument and of writing because this is where we're bringing our voice into it, our own logical connection and thinking. So for example, we've talked about Mr. Jernigan being the greatest teacher in the world, being the thesis. We talked that he was the funniest teacher in the world as our first claim that helps support that. We've shown different types of evidence that could do it, uh, that could show that. And then finally, at the end of that paragraph about the about the fu his funniness, we may something say something like, clearly one hallmark of a great teacher is the ability to engage his class. And there's no better way to do it than make them laugh. It's clear that Mr. Jernigan has this mastered. Okay, that would be a suitable end and would help kind of wrap up uh, those logical connections. Obviously, you could spell out how important that humor is in the classroom and how important that engagement is in being a good teacher. So you'd probably want to do that in your warranting as well. If we think of our argumentation like this pyramid, okay, the thesis is what's up top. It's what everybody sees and what the reader should remember. The claims are below it. They're debatable, but they support that the thesis is true. The evidence is not debatable. It's factual evidence that shows the claims to be true. And the warranting is our explanation of the logical connections and reasons behind the rest of the argument. It's important that we acknowledge our op opposition when we're doing argumentation. If we don't, we become, come off as one-sided and uh, is biased and that's not a good place to be in in an argument so it's important that we mention argument the basic structure for that would be to acknowledge the argument first okay counter with a counterclaim and then prove that counterclaim to be true with evidence and then finally warrant how that counterclaim refutes the op opponent's argument. So for example, if we were talking on Mr. Jernigan and somebody wanted to launch a counterclaim that Mr. Jernigan is not funny, in fact he is rude and arrogant, okay, we could say the opposition may say that Mr. Jernigan's humor is simply rude and arrogant. We would at that point want to launch a counterclaim. However, his arrogance and rudeness is simply a misinterpretation of his wry and sarcastic sense of humor, period. Okay. That would go ahead and, and lead us to uh, that counterclaim that, that it's a wry and sarcastic sense of humor, and then we would provide some evidence. For example, we could provide an example of Mr. Jernigan, um, you know, and we'll make up a story completely, uh, comforting a student who was crying uh, to show that, that he's not rude. In fact, he's, he's gentle and caring. Um, at that point, we would go ahead and warrant and show the reasoning and connection between that, our thesis, or that, uh, our counterclaim, and then the refutation of the other claim. So it's important to understand counterclaims, and we'll get some practice with these later on. So once again, the anatomy is to simply identify an opponent's claim, transition with contrast words, using words like however, despite this, but in actuality, those types of things. Launch our own counterclaim. We can either deny the truthfulness, we can recognize partial validity, validity or we can minimi minimize the importance of their claim, uh, which is obviously the weakest version because we're just trying to distract from what they said. Uh, however, we, at that point, we could go ahead and launch some evidence showing our counterclaim to be true, and then we could have a warrant showing logical connection between the evidence, the counterclaim, and the lack of importance or the lack of val validity of the opponent's claim. So this is another little chart showing the structure, and we just went over it, right? We acknowledge it. We give a counterclaim. We sh give evidence showing that the counterclaim is true, and then we warrant basically bringing it up all together, showing how the evidence and counterclaim show that the opposition's claim is not true. This is a quick comparison between an argumentative essay and a regular essay, uh, fairly similar. Uh, we do some different things and call some sentences different things, but pretty easy if we're honest with ourselves. And uh, from that point, we'll go ahead and go on to this last slide. This last slide, if you'll go, well, the second to last slide, sorry, if you'll go ahead and break down this argument into its component parts, its claim, evidence, warrants, counterclaims, and the like. And then finally, if you want to pause this, we'll go on to the next one. If you'll also break down this next 
little snippet into its appropriate component parts. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. It's been good, and hopefully you learned something.